Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, I will be discussing about dual nature of radiation and de Broglie hypothesis. That means de Broglie waves or matter waves. Let us start. So, the question here is, is light have a wave nature or a particle nature? Light means electromagnetic waves starting from X-rays, X-rays are ultraviolet radiation or visible radiation or IR radiation, microwave radiation, radio waves, etc. All these are electromagnetic waves. Now, the question is, is radiation behaves like a particles or waves? For this one, let us see the properties of light. Light means I mean to say the radiation. Let us consider a surface. Now, a radiation is incidenting on this surface, like this way. Now, the radiation is incidenting. Now, this radiation reflects back from this surface into the space. Now, this is a reflected radiation. Now, here, when we say the light is reflected, the angle of incidence this is the angle of incidence this is normal to the surface and this is angle of reflection here when we say the reflection of light angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection this property of the light can be explained by considering light is in the form of waves fine now we can understand that the light is behaving like a waves fine now let us take another example or property of the light this is refraction of light now if you see here this is a this is an interface this is a one medium this is another medium now light ray is incidenting from one medium to another medium this is the normal normal to the surface now when a light ray is incidenting on this medium a part of radiation incident radiation reflects back into the space and a part of this radiation transferred through the second medium and the angle between the normal to the this transferred radiation is called refracted ray and here this is angle of refraction this is angle of incident this is angle of reflection this phenomena also can be explained by considering light is in the form of waves light is in the form of waves that means here also light is behaving like waves now let us consider some other important properties of light. Those are interference and diffraction of light. Interference means we know very well if two waves are traveling in the same direction, this is the first wave and this is the second wave. If they have a same frequency or wavelength and the phase difference between them is zero or they are in phase then we can say those two waves are in coherence with each other if they superimpose these two waves the resultant of these two waves will be look like this way you can see here let us consider this is the amplitude a1 of the first wave and the amplitude of this is the wave propagation direction the amplitude of the second wave is a2 now the resultant of these two waves that means this after superposition we can expect since the phase difference is zero the resultant amplitude will be a summation of two amplitudes let's look like this way now the resultant amplitude is the summation of two amplitudes that is a1 plus a2 similarly even in this direction also a1 plus 
For example, if there is another wave which is out of phase with respect to the third wave, first wave. Now the third wave is out of phase with respect to first wave. Now if either second wave, either second wave or third wave superimpose, then what happens? The resultant is the same. Super, according to superposition principle, the summation of amplitudes. Here if you see, this is a, A2, then obviously we can consider this is a minus A2. Minus A2 because this is a crest and this is rough. So in the opposite direction we consider the amplitude is negative. So the resultant of these two would be A2 minus A2 which is 0. So until here this is 0 and here also again you can consider this is a minus A2 then this would be plus A2. So here in, the, in this case again the superposition principle gives us 0. So that means if the two waves are out of phase you get no intensity. If the two waves are in, in phase you get highest amplitude so consequently you get intense light. Now this is called interference. The diffraction means for example if you have any light Simply, the diffraction means bending of light. And also, for example, if you see, when the light rays are traveling, for example, I have a pinhole here. This is a pinhole. Now what happens? When the light ray is traveling through this pinhole, they will bend. This property of bending is called diffraction. However, here, the bending can only occur when the slit width, this is the slit width, if the slit width D of the order of wavelength of the wave, then only this kind of bending can occur. Right? So these two are the two important properties of light. Now, let us see how we can explain this interference and diffraction by using particle nature or wave nature. Now let us consider this is a light source. Now, if you imagine that this light source is emitting the light in the form of particles. Particles, I have stones here, I'm throwing it out. What happens? These particles will try to move in a straight line in all the direction like this way. So for this one, we wanted to observe the diffraction of this light. So we have made two pinholes here. This is one pinhole, this is another pinhole. Now, if you consider this light is in the form of photons, that means the particles. This light is in the form of particles. Now what happens? These particles, anyway, the particle will, will move in a straight line, you know it. Now, this particle will pass through this pinhole and makes an impression here. And another particle or some particles may pass through this pinhole, make another impression here. So, if at all, if the light is behaving like a particles, then we would only expect one impression here, another impression here. That means light is coming means you will see a bright spot here. This is another bright spot. And in between, everything is dark. Because there is no light is coming here. Everything is blocked by this, this separator. Only two pinholes are there. This is our imagination. However, in a real experiment, when you do a real experiment you will see like this way in the real experiment you will see there is a bright spot dark spot bright spot dark spot bright dark bright dark and so on so that means for the same light when we send through a two pinholes we don't see two only two bright, bright spots but we see alternatively bright and dark spots continuously so that means Clearly, the light is not behaving like a particles here. Light is behaving. Now, to explain this pattern, bright dark, bright dark pattern, we only can consider light behaves like waves. Now, 
the light which is emitting from here is traveling in the form of waves like this way. Now these light waves are bended here. This is called a diffraction. Now these bended light, light this is like this way and here also like this way, they are traveling. During their traveling, they are superimposing. When they are superimposing, the crust of one wave he superimposes with the crust of another wave so that we get a bright spot. If the trough of this wave is superimposes with the crust of this wave, then we get dark fringes. So, in a real experiment, we are getting like this way. So, this can only explain by considering light is in the form of waves, not as a particles. If you consider particles, then we should expect only two bright spots. This is the one, two. Because particles can, go, can travel in only one particular direction. But the light is, if you consider the light is in the form of waves, then these light waves are traveling and getting diffracted here. These diffracted waves are interfering constructively and destructively so that whenever there is a constructive interference, we get a bright spot. Whenever there is a destructive interference, we get dark spot. So in this way, we get bright spot, dark spot alternatively. So this is being explained by considering light is in the form of waves. Now, again, we understand that light is behaving like a wave here also. Let us see some other example. Yeah, this is also a wave. Now, we will see some other example called photoelectric effect. Here, here the effect means, here what we do is, we have taken, this is a metal surface. Now what we did is, we are sending some light, electromagnetic radiation, onto this plate. What happens, this plate is, from this plate, the electrons are emitting. This is electron. This is another electron. When we incident some light onto this metal plate, the electrons are ejecting from the metal plate. This phenomena is called photoelectric effect. Now, how to explain this phenomena? Can we consider wave nature? If at all we consider wave nature, we couldn't explain photoelectric effect. However, we could explain the photoelectric effect by considering light is in the form of particles. Let us see. What happens is, when an electromagnetic radiation is incidenting on this metal plate, metal plate means obviously there will be some atoms will be there, certainly. There will be a lot of atoms will be there. When electromagnetic radiation is incidenting on this metal plate, like this way, so the electromagnetic radiation is interacting with the electrons in the atom. Now, the energy of this electromagnetic radiation is transferring through to this electron. Now, when this electron is getting energy from this photon, it is getting excited. If the energy of the incident photon is large enough, so that then the electron can escape the force of attraction between the nucleus and electron. Then electron is moving away from the atom so that the electron is emitting from the metal surface. So this is called a photoelectric effect. When the photons are incidenting on a surface, metal surface, electrons are emitting. Now, how to explain this? For example, let us consider this is a potassium surface. That means potassium plate. To eject one electron, valence electron, we require two electron volts. Now, we are considering some light is in the form of particles. Light is in the form of particles. Now, we are sending a particle which has an energy 1.77 electron volts. But if you see here, the required energy to remove electron from this potassium plate is 2 electron volt. But we only sending here, in this particular example, example number 1, the particle energy is 1.77 electron volts, which is not enough to overcome the force of attraction between electron and the nucleus. So electron cannot be ejected here. That is the reason why there is no electron ejection here. Because 
the incident photon has a less energy than the required energy to remove electron. Now, we are sending another photon here, another particle here. The particle energy is 2.25 electron volts. Now, if you see here, the required energy is only 2 electron volt, but we are sending 2.25 electron volt particle. So, certainly, the energy of this particle can be transferred to the electron. So, now electron can be ejected from the surface of the potassium, surface, potassium metal. That is the reason why we see the electron is emitted. And the difference in energy, 2 electron volts, 2.25 minus 2, that means 0.25 electron volts, will be converted into the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. That is the reason why this electron is moving with some velocity. The velocity is given by 2.96 into 10 power 5 meter per second. Now we will also consider another photon. This is another photon, another particle, which has energy 3.1 electron volt. We are incending another particle of light with energy 3.1 electron volt. Now the required energy only 2.2 2 electron volts. So in this case also, when the, when the photon is incidenting on this metal surface, the energy of this particle can be transferred to the metal surface and the electrons can absorb and electrons can be liberated from the surface. Now the excess energy, now the excess energy will be converted into the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, which is, which is given here, 6.22 into 10 to the power 5 meter per second. You can also see here, here the difference energy is only 0.25 electron volts, so the velocity is less. Here the difference energy is more than 0.25 electron volts. Here you can see almost 1.1 electron volts. So that's the reason why you can see almost uh, three times higher than the velocity of the electron, which is emitted here. So that means excess energy is converted into kinetic energy of the ejected electron. Now here we are considering the incident light is in the form of particles. Those particles are called photons. These are the particles these particles are called photons and each photon has energy is equal to h nu. Here you can see h nu, h means Planck's constant, nu is the frequency of the light or electromagnetic radiation. This effect successfully explained by considering light is in the form of particles and each particle carries a fixed energy and the relation between the energy and the particle frequency is given by E is equal to H nu. So that means here we consider light is in the form of particles. But if you see in the last few examples, we consider light is in the form of waves. Then only we could explain all the properties. But here, in this interaction of light with the material, light is not behaving like a waves. Light is behaving like a particles. So that means, we can see, so here the light is behaving like a waves. Here also waves. This is a refraction, also reflection presence here. So that means light is behaving like a waves here. And in this particular example, that is a photons, that is a photoelectric effect, light is behaving like a particles. And those particles are called photons. So that means here, this is a particle nature. So that means light behaves like a both waves and particle nature. This is called dual nature of light or dual nature of radiation. This is called dual nature of radiation. That means the electromagnetic radiation behaves like a particles as well as waves. It behaves sometimes a particles, it behaves sometimes like a waves. Clear now. Now clear from this, from this we can say that the light is exists in both ways. That means either particle wave, particle nature or wave nature. That's the reason why we say dual nature of light. Thank you for your attention. See you again.